How's it going? Welcome to the Dimat channel. If you're new to me, thank you very much for clicking on this video. I'm Chris Bilton. I was a professional jeweler for over 20 years in the UK, but now I'm living in Japan and putting my skills to good use by making jewelry, making instructional videos. So welcome. If you're into that kind of thing, please get a like and subscribe. Helps the channel grow. Notification bell, get notified of new videos, of which there are new ones coming out every three or four days now on a roll. Uh, today, this is a very fast video, a very quick one. We're not actually making anything. This is just a video made in response to a YouTube comment. Someone was interested in the sort of setup, how we, how we work. When I say we, I think the way I do things is very kind of specific to London. because so I have worked with jewelers from Newcastle and Birmingham. They didn't do it exactly like this. So this sort of style is quite London. So just to document it, and it might be of interest to people in the future, just get the video up on YouTube just for future people to see. Um, yeah, let's just talk about the way I do stuff. This video, I'm just going to talk about what I do without meaning to sound like is what you should do. Just do what you want, whatever suits you. Um, so I sit on an office chair. It's height adjustable. That's important because I want to be able to adjust it high so I can sit down comfortably and with stability and look down on things when I'm lining up collets into shanks and stuff. And... Uh, drop it right down low so I need to really look closely at solders that I've just done make sure they're done correctly and whatever so a height adjustable chair I think is really important right yeah I'm right-handed so I've got some soldering got a little sort of wire hook thing I made just something that holds that in position um, yeah on the right hand side because I'm right-handed obviously keep my lighter there I recommend having a lighter an old school one which is got the lighter fluid if you've got a gas lighter like a disposable one they're all right, I guess, but they are a little bit of a liability because red hot bits of metal, hot charcoal block, flames coming out here. That's a basically a pressurized little bomb. <laughs> it's like pressurized full of flammable liquid if you've got one of those cheapy ones. So uh, yeah, I, I would just, just recommend not having that on your workbench. But at the same time, loads of people do without any problem. So just bear in mind that it, consider what it is when it's placed next to very very hot items. I'll tell you what I used to do for years, literally over over 10 years. I just have a little hole drilled in there and then you know clipper lighters you can take that piece out like the insert with the spring spring loaded wheel and the flint section and I just had it in in little holes just sit in there. When I need to light my flame I just do that pick it up just hold it kick, just light it with a spark not actually a flame. Quite miss doing that it's quite fun. Uh, but yeah, that is an option. So that totally eliminates the need of a lighter at all. You just need flints, basically, in your little clipper insert. Did a video on this very recently. I made this out of a bit of a coat hanger wire. So just a bit of wire, you bend it down, comes out a little bit, goes across. In the video, I did mention it in the write-up, in the description for the video, but I, I'd gone out too far. I ended up adjusting it. So it doesn't come out quite as far. I mean, it could go in like really, really close, like sort of one centimeter out and just slot, as long as the handle fits in there, should be all right. Uh, the only reason is because the more out they are, the more likely they are to get in your way. And these do get in the way a little bit when I'm putting files out of the pocket. Since I mentioned the pocket, let's talk about these next. Just bits of leather folded in half, very cheap, big sheet of leather I bought off eBay or I don't know, might have just found it in the house somewhere. Uh, yeah, just with screws, just nailed it up under the bench and then yeah just handy pockets for buff sticks i've got these mandrel things my brush lives in there didn't mean to it's just naturally where it started getting thrown so it lives in there now and then files this side someone commented a long time ago that you shouldn't keep files together in the same place because they slide together and damage damage each other um that's probably correct but uh, i'm just gonna do it anyway <laughs> I said this video is just going to be about my setup. It's already getting specific about my tools. These buff sticks, it's not like one for platinum, one for gold, like whatever. I use all of them on all grades of metal. I don't worry about the metals mixing up on the buff sticks. Uh, they're just different grades. So yeah, I've got fine ones, coarse ones and whatever. Uh, the only time I don't want to mix metals is in the skin, like all the lemon that catches in the skin. I try to keep it separate because I think I mentioned might have been a Golden Nuggets video ages ago. Um, just for being a bit clever with your weights of what you're wasting and sending to scrap and stuff, it's nice to keep all your lemmel separate. I'll give you an example of that. Started new bags recently. Gold, platinum. So I just keep them separate. It's not 100% perfect, but at least I've got a kind of idea what I'm sending and what kind of money I can expect back. 
the bench peg. I need to do a video on fitting a new bench peg. Uh, this is a very UK style one. I've got a new one here waiting for me to make a video on. That's what they're like when they're brand new. Oops, this is what they're like when they're brand new. Quite long, stick out quite far. Look. What I do is I hack them off, give me a bit of a head start, because I think it's a bit thin uh, for leaning rings on and stuff. You don't have to. Uh, they go that way usually. I have had a used a peg before, flat on top. I found it really useful when I'm like working with bits of chain. You can just put things on there, they stay there. This way around, things just slide off all the time. Chills it out a hole, goes in there, screw goes underneath, nice and stable. Uh, something gets mentioned a lot from people. I've got these slots in there. It's just something do yourself with a jigsaw or saw, whatever you got to use. And the reason for this is when I'm holding hot things in tweezers or holding things in position for soldering, I just put my tweezers in there. And then obviously the more you pull it down, harder it squeezes the tweezers closed. So yeah, really convenient spot for you right in front of you. So I just grab that, solder it, put that back. There you go, ready to put in the acid or whatever you want to do. On my left side, I have my metal block, bench block. Uh, underneath it, I made, I made a little video for the patrons recently. This was out of a vintage pair of speakers. There's one under the bench. Massive pair of speakers, I bought a pair of them. One is now a box for a subwoofer in my car. <laughs> and then uh, the other one stays there. There's a bit of kind of surround sound, a bit of extra bass for my stereo here. Uh, yeah, this, I made a video for the patrons because it wasn't quite good enough for a video for the channel, but this was like a bit of sound deadening, deadening felt from inside of the speakers. Uh, it's really good. Like, if it's actually specific for deadening sound. Uh, it went over the cover on the terminals at the back of the speaker because obviously that's just sort of plastic uh, so it helps the sound stay in the box and come out the front of the speaker better I imagine uh, works really well like I tested it before that I had a bit of like carpet tile my entire career since I very very started recently changed to this because the sound was totally deadened compared to that carpet tile so if you can find yourself a bit of proper soundproof felt really good like obviously it's flat doesn't take much vibration out because the more soft that is the more it's going to take out of your ability to hit things strike things effectively leather doily here see what the sound is different you hear that sound difference <laughs> right anyway so yeah something under my metal block that's <laughs> That's all I needed to say. Right, so next. Uh, soldering block. I have got a charcoal block on top of this sort of fake asbestos. I don't know what that is. It's like a soldering. It's, it's for jewellers. Like I bought it from a jeweller's trade catalogue. Um, it's for soldering, but soldering is still nicer on charcoal. But I like it because all the dust from my charcoal block and stuff goes on there rather than directly on my metal plate. Um, you'll find with experience you end up with your own little quirks and stuff like that's why I'm sort of I don't want to tell you you've got to have this you totally haven't got to have that but it's just something I like to do so I mentioned this metal plate so we're on to this next bench plate uh, anything will do this specific piece of metal was literally just a piece of crap found on the floor whilst exploring like an abandoned sort of warehouse this old stony old rustic building in Granada in Spain um, I just picked it up. I don't know why. I just sort of thought I liked it. It sort of felt like it was going to be useful. And I bought it home. It's first job. You see that hole there? It was actually a clock. I had like a battery pack on the back and the hand sticking out. I didn't have any numbers on it. It was just like a, a clock. <laughs> like hands there. And it was on the wall for years, like downstairs at work. Um, literally years, like six, seven years. And now it's living in Japan with me here as my bench plate because I didn't have a piece of metal, but I had this clock. I was like, okay, got a new job for you. So <laughs> now it's, yeah, I do find it kind of funny. It's just this thing that's probably just been led for decades on the floor in Spain. And then it was in a, a posh London jewelers as a clock. And now it's in Japan as a bench plate. So it's kind of fun. I'm sort of uh, kind of fond of it now. <laughs> I have got a little oil pot and the jewellers I used to work with in London, they used to swear that oil soaks through glass. I'm not convinced. I think just they would dip drills in it, wipe it on the edge, and then that bit of oil, because it's such a slippery sort of liquid and moves so slowly, I reckon just you tap it on the edge, it goes over, you can hardly see it, and it just goes down, down, down overnight, and then just gets it a little bit wet, and then just constantly doing that all around it. 
uh, that's why you end up with oil underneath there. I, that's just my theory because I don't believe oil goes through glass and I certainly never happened on this one. And uh, <clears throat> after knocking it over twice in like about a month, got a bit fed up of it. So this is a brand new little thing, little invention, just a blob of blue tack underneath it. So now, so now with that blue tack, it's just there. It's not difficult to move. I need to bring it closer to me, doing a lot of drilling, but it just keeps it a little bit more, a little bit more stable. So if I accidentally knock it, it doesn't roll over. You will find the tools you use often end up living closer to you, like more convenient to grab them. So all my needle files, a lot of these I'm not using that much, so I may sort through them. I've got too many here, too many that don't get used. So they can just go in a tin at the back, just a bit further away. So obviously, I, I think the less tools you have cluttering up your workspace, the better. Just only have the essential tools that you use a lot. Uh, I like to have a little knife, uh, some sort of blade, but on the workbench, really useful. Just Got to spread open shoulders or something, or just I don't know. Take, got to take the back off that to open it up. Use a knife blade. It's a really useful little thing. So yeah, a knife blade or any sort of pen knife, small blade is quite useful on the bench. Uh, that's for taking the flint out of my lighter needle files. This has ended up living here, uh, right-handed. So I've got this on the right-hand side. Yeah, a lot of you will have shaft drive. Pender motors, just so you know, micro motors are so much nicer to use. Um, it's got cruise control, goes backwards, forwards. Uh, it's just really smooth, really quiet. I'll never go back to a shaft drive pender motor. I mean, they just sound so old fashioned. And the horrible things are really long, really heavy, shaking while you're trying to drill really accurately, really tiresome on your wrist and stuff. You're horrible compared to these. These are much nicer. If you can get, if you want to replace your drill, massive massive upgrade literally made me a much more skillful jeweler using this instead of an old school 1950s technology pendant motor and just as a way of keeping my bench as clear as possible of tools I've got a little hook on the side for my saw blade saw frame sorry so that's that's useful on my right hand side forgot to mention my skin should have mentioned that first uh this is very english jeweler style some jewelers have like a bench tin i i don't like them i don't like the idea of them Jewelers I've seen using them. I've been in workshops where some people have got them. They're always full of tools just thrown in there with the pliers and they're working and one guy dropped a sapphire in there and you heard it go dang in the metal and, he's, and you can hear this like if he's scratching around looking for it. I'm just like oh my god that poor sapphire is going to get ruined. Um, so a bench skin nice and soft keep it clear. But it's nice if you can get them lit up any way you got to and just nice and soft, keep it clear, dust, tools. Uh, it was always drummed into me when I was working on something expensive because we're in London, we're working on stones, literally worth tens of thousands of pounds all the time. Um, so my boss would always be very, very clear. It's like, keep your skin clear of tools when you're handling this, like, don't be rough with it. Because um, yeah, things are expensive and you don't want to, just a small mistake of just dropping it or putting it on your bench peg and it just slides off and goes in there. But just, <laughs> you're so unlucky. <laughs> just ping, a <laughs> little bit chips off and you ruined it. Uh, the lamp is worth a mention. Uh, just any kind of long lamp is good. Quite bright, LED lights, daylight, nice white light. So it's really comfortable for your eyes to work. Um, jewelers trade shops always sell these, but they're like specific for jewelers. I would argue there's no such thing as a jeweler specific lamp. They're just lamps, <laughs> but it's probably just got some like gold star and then a little picture of a diamond or some cheesy brand name. And then uh, they send it to jewelers like twice what they're, what they're worth. So just go to any hardware store, the lamp section or electronics specialist, and just look at the lamps. You, I bought this for like half the cost of what jewelers would pay in London. And there's nothing different about it. It's actually probably better than what I had in London. Um, just the only thing I'd look for, make sure it goes nice and bright, thousand lumens, that kind of thing, and you get a nice white light, nice and bright, and uh, yeah, and off you go. Um, yeah, there you go, LEDs are cool because they last forever, no maintenance really, like the old school lamps, and they don't get hot. The old lamps used to get quite warm, which is uncomfortable in the summer when you're working in an already hot workshop. Um, I mean, everyone's different. It's, we've got our own workspace, like different shaped workshops as well. So you just use what you got. It's quite nice, I think, if you've got drawers under your bench, you can keep everything out of the way there. I've got this shelf in unit. It was twice the height in my before I moved to this room. Um, cut it in half, got the other half now in front of me where I do all my editing. 
Uh, so yeah, I've just kept all my tools in here. I've got drawers just for stuff, 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 some stuff, some stuff. <laughs> it's just stuff world and just things that are useful but don't need them all the time. They just kind of get pushed to the back and the things you use more often sort of come to the front. So drills, these I use all the time. Uh, that's more like setting stuff. Ball phrases get used all the time. So that's a tin I can grab quickly. Uh, yeah, the files, like the stuff that I really want to get quickly. It's nice to be kind of half organized. I know I'm not the most tidy jeweler, but things do kind of have a home and they are at least near their home, if not in their home, if you know what I mean. So I can find things relatively easily. So just a quick video to talk about my setup and how it is and why it is the way it is. I mean, it's very specific to me and it's an amalgamation of just what I've picked up over the years from other people and just the type of work I've been doing as well. So you may find if you're just like a hobbyist jeweler, you don't have to copy this. Um, there are some things I'd be a bit more strong on than other things, but basically you just, just do it and you'll learn a lot and you'll find what works for you best, what tools you need nearer you more than others and then it just sort of takes shape that's specific to the way you work so just do it try it with experience just let it let it flow the way it wants to you haven't got to see something and then try and copy it just do what works for you that's what i recommend so i'm going to end it there yeah quick video um got no new patrons or members to say thank you to but as always i'm very grateful to the patrons and members if you want to help me do more share more of what i know and what i've learned over the years uh it'd be cool if you became a patron yourself there's links in the description to take you to a patreon website where you can join and you can read about all the benefits of doing so uh also let me just mention there's another like sidekick channel called diamond mount eclipse and uh the idea is it's just like there's no intro there's no outro there's none of this talking or begging for new patrons it's just like say i did a video on soldering a jump ring like diamond mount eclipse will just be me soldering the job ring like like the videos are like two minutes long at the most so yeah no waffle just what the title the title will tell you what the video is about and then you just see me do it so that's what it is it's just the essence of what a half hour video will just be compressed down to like a few minutes just to give you the essence of what it was about and uh just some people like short videos so it's just very direct so that's what i wanted to create that channel for so yeah there's new videos on that channel coming all the time as well so check that out subscribe to that as well and uh, yeah, hope you, hope you join me again on the next video on the Diamond Map channel. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.